We are in week three of our series, Overcomer. And as we jump in today, uh, I want to tell you this. I have been praying and believing God um, for today, just like we do every week. Um, But I've been praying uh, for this message because I believe that there are some who are are going to be challenged uh, beyond the norm. Uh, They're going to be challenged and and moved to action because of the message today. And um, I believe it's going to be life-changing for many of us. But I know that there will be some that that will really take this to heart and and it will really impact you and speak to you uh, in in a way that may cause you to step out and do something that God's placed on your heart to do. Uh, I'm not naive enough to believe that every single person uh, is going to feel that way, but I know that some are um, because I, I really sense that God's been, been dealing with me about that. And so I'm excited to be, as we jump into week three because I know that this is going to be powerful for many of us. And uh, so I want to jump into this today. Our theme verse, the verse that we've been talking about um, throughout this series, found in Romans 8, 37. God has called us to be an overcomer. And here's what it says. It says, we are, we are more than conquerors or overcomers, right? We are more than conquerors through him. Who's that talking about? Jesus, through him who loved us. Because of what Jesus has done, we are overcomers. Not in and of ourselves, but because of what Jesus has done for us, we are overcomers. Let me begin uh, today with a, a story um, and before I tell the story, let me, let me give you some, some context. For me, uh, Sunday afternoon is my favorite time of the week, uh, bar none. Sunday afternoon is, is heaven to me on earth because um, the message is done. It, you know, the, the Sunday morning is, is, is over, everything has gone well, and I get to be able to sit back and relax for just a little while before it all starts up again really early Monday morning for me. And so Sunday afternoon, I get to just relax and, and enjoy that time, and I, and I love that time. And so sometimes we'll do stuff, you know, just kind of hang out as a family, maybe watch uh, something on TV or whatever. One particular day, I, I happened to be out on our back deck. It was a beautiful day. Um, Might have been grilling something. I can't remember. I remember being on the back deck. I remember I was looking through uh, on my phone and reading an ebook. Um, I enjoy reading it that way because um, it's it's easier for me. It's easier to store the books that way. And so I I like reading uh, books on my phone. And so I was reading uh, a book and um, then I got a, a message, a word, or something actually popped on my phone that, that said that there had been a horrific church shooting um, that had just, just happened. And, uh, and I was like, oh my goodness. I, I clicked on it and, and read some of the things that were going on and just, just tragic what, it, what had taken place. Um, we've heard of some of those things that have gone on and, and um, there's been... M- way too many of those kind of things that have happened recently, but it was, it was you know, it, it was very touching, very, very moving to me because we just finished a Sunday. This had just happened. And so right, right then and there, I just, I just said, Lord, I, I pray for those that, that are going through this, that are suffering, that are hurting, those that have lost some, someone. I, and, and, and I took a few moments right then and just, just began to pray. I sent a couple of text messages after that to some people that, that might, hadn't heard about it so that they could be praying. And then just as I finished that up, one of the kids came barreling outside and, you know, we're running to do something. And I, so I addressed them, oh, be careful, whatever it is you're doing. I remember a, a loud pickup truck drove by in my view and I looked, oh, what a cool truck that is. And then I went right back to my ebook and started reading and it, that quick, I forgot about what had just happened, the tragedy that had just taken place. And it wasn't until sometime later that I remembered what had happened. And I thought, oh my God, how quickly do I forget those things that, that should 
break the heart of anyone, much less a pastor, and, and, and for not just a few seconds, but for a, t- a time longer than that, be able to be broken and pray and, and seek the heart of God on behalf of others. But how quickly do we forget? How quickly do we pass on and, and move on to the next thing? Why? Why can I not be impacted more than that? What in the world is wrong with me? And I thought about that for just a little bit. Here today, I want to talk about overcoming the epidemic of apathy. Overcoming the epidemic of apathy. Some have labeled this generation the apathetic generation. I, I, I don't want to get involved. It's, it's much easier just to do what I want to do. I don't want to have to do too much. A, a lack of interest, a, a lack of passion, a lack of concern. Uh, a powerful illustration about this very topic of this very thing is found in the book of Luke. Uh, a, a young man comes up to Jesus and he begins to ask Jesus some questions. He says, what I have to do to inherit the kingdom of God? You may, have remember, you may remember this. He, he's asking this question. What, what is it that I have to do? What, what is it that I need to do? It, it, it's kind of like, you know, What's the least that I have to do? If you've ever taken a class and you go up to the teacher and you're like, what's the least I have to do to be able to just pass? Or what's the least that I have to do to be able to get a, a, an A in this class? What, what is it that I, I've got to do? That's kind of what he's doing here. He's saying, what is it that I've got to do? And, and, and Jesus responds, you know the law. Follow, follow the law. Follow, you know, what does it say? And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, that's, that's what you need to do. And he says, yeah, but what, what else do I do? There's got to be more. There's got to be more than that. What else is it that, that I need to do? And so he's, he says, well, yeah, but who is my neighbor? Who, who's my neighbor? He's trying to justify himself. And, and he says, who is it that, that is my neighbor? What, who should I have to care about? You know, what people can I leave out of this? And what people do I really have to care about? And so Jesus tells this story to him. He says, there was a man that was going to Jerusalem, and along the way, he fell among robbers. And these guys came, and they beat him up, and they, they threw him on the side of the road, leaving him for dead. And we pick up the story in Luke 10, verse 30. It says, a priest came along that way, happened to be going down that same road, And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. This is one of the most powerful illustrations, the most powerful stories in Scripture of the very thing that we're talking about today, apathy. This is not my problem. I don't want to get involved. If I stop to do anything, then it may cost me something. It may be something that I have to do that I don't really want to do. And so I'm just going to pass by on the other side. Epidemic of apathy. This generation has also been called the meh generation. (laughs) Meh. Eh. I don't feel like it. Eh. How do you feel about things? Eh. Do you want to get involved? Eh. What are you passionate about? Eh. Not much. We, we, we tend to not care very much at times about things maybe that should carry a little bit more weight. Things that, that, that we should care, care about. Why? We have to answer this question. Why don't we care the way Jesus calls us to care in Scripture. Why don't we care? Why why do we not do those things? Let me give you a couple couple thoughts along this line. Why is it so hard for us sometimes to care about some of the things that that come our way? Here's here's the first. The um, amount of information that, that comes our direction can be overwhelming. Right? The amount of information that we get, it, it can be overwhelming. I mean, 
If you open up your news feed or, or even just turn the, the, on the TV and, and listen to the news, I mean, in just a few moments, you may hear about, you know, a, a, a tornado uh, down south somewhere. You may hear about, you know, a tsunami that hit parts of, of India or whatever. You may hear about a, a dog that went to the circus and, you know, something bad happened to him. You may hear about a, a, a GoFundMe for a child that needs a surgery. Um, you may hear about someone who saw the face of Jesus in their pizza or something like that. You know what I mean? There's just so much information that comes our way just immediately. But why can't I seem to, to care? It's just, it, there's so many things out there to care about, right? There, there, there's stuff coming at us all the time. It, it, it's information overload. Maybe uh, another reason is this. We feel hopeless to make a change. Sometimes some of the things that are going on that, that maybe we, we might grieve about or, or maybe really hit, uh, hit home with us, it, 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 there's no way that we could really do much about it. There's, there's not much change that we could make happen. It's hard to care about something that, that is so far away. It's, it's, it's out of reach. How would I even get there? I don't have the resources to do anything to really make that much of a difference. We want to do something, but you know what? I, I, I'm just... I'm just trying to get through the day right now. I, I don't know how I could help someone else. Or I'm just trying to pass my chemistry class. I don't really know that I can care too much about what's going on with somebody else. Or I'm just trying to potty train my two-year-old for the love of God. Would you just go in there and go bathroom on your own? You know, I mean, there are things that, that are weighing upon us. And, and so... Because of that, it's difficult to care about some of the other things that are going on. Here's another thing. We are blessed and cursed with comfort. Right? We're blessed and cursed with comfort. We're blessed because, I mean, think about it. Most of us can, can jump on our phone and open an app and order a pizza while kicked back on our recliner... And it will show up at our front door within 30 minutes or so of ordering it, right? I mean, you can, you can tell Alexa, Hey, Alexa, order me a new pair of shoes. From your ordering preference, you like this. Do you want to order this? Yes, order me those shoes. And in a couple of days, Amazon Prime will deliver it to your doorstep without you having to do a whole lot. It's amazing. I mean, we are blessed with comfort, but we're also cursed with comfort. Think about it. Because the more, comf the more comfortable life becomes, the more we tend to focus on ourselves, right? The more that life seems to be all about us. Uh, uh, comfort, I heard someone say, is really, it's like a drug, and, and the more we get, the more that we want comfort. And we do things, and we set things up, and we make sure everything it, 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 are surrounding us tends to, to lead us towards comfort. I want comfort. And, and because of that, we tend to want a God who will get us what we want so that we can be comfortable. I want to go to a church that makes me feel good and feel comfortable. So how do we change this? How do we step out of this and, and, and realize that, you know, it's not always about our comfort and God didn't place us here for us to just live our life in complete comfort and safety all the time. That's not God's plan for us. That's not his purpose for us. How do we change this and how do we break free out of that uh, mentality? How do we do that? How do we overcome the epidemic of apathy? Let me give you this thought. Think about this. If you're taking notes, write this down. We have to consistently expose ourselves to something that creates a righteous discomfort. We have to consistently expose ourselves to something that causes a righteous 
discomfort. There's a lot of words there, but let me, let me, let me focus on a few. Consistently. Here's the deal. Lack of consistency results in a lack of interest. If we're not consistently hearing, if we're not consistently receiving, if we're not consistently put, putting things around us that cause us to think outside of ourselves and away from ourselves and away from our own comfort, then we will just continue to focus on self. One of the, one of the best ways to do this that I've ever seen is to go on a mission trip. Caleb was just telling me that it, that it popped up on, on, on his feed uh, that nine years ago, he and I were in Lebanon together. And, and let me just tell you, we experienced some things and saw some things that, that really, it, it, it'll change you. I can remember going um, to these different places where, where the refugees that had fled the, the, the wars and the different things in, in neighboring countries had come into Lebanon and they had set up these camps and, and there was just house after house after house of, of, of these tent-like structures and what they were, it was the banners that had been pulled off or, 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 or had fallen off of billboards and this, this, this paper thin stuff, they were using it as, as a covering and they built these, you know, just out of sticks and, and timbers, a frame that they were putting this over and they, they, they were living in just this one room tent basically. And there might be 10 or 15 people in that family living in, in, in this little makeshift house. And it was just, it was just house after house after house. And, and, and you go and you spend time with, with these people and you saw, I saw the, all these kids coming up and running up to me and I had a, a bottle of water with me about half full and the kids were like, oh, you know, da, 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 da. they were talking. And of course, I couldn't understand it. They were pointing at, at my bottle of water and they wanted the water. And I, I, I gave it to one of the little girls there that was, was asking me about it. And, and man, her, her face just lit up. She was so excited. You, you'd think, you know, I'd given her a new bike or something. She was all excited about it. And I thought, you know, they're, they're, they're living in such horrible conditions no indoor plumbing or bathroom there. They had these just outhouse looking things. It stunk terribly around there. Not bathed probably in that week at least. It, 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 was, it was so unbelievable, but, but it seemed like they were, they were so happy and so excited just to see us and be able to talk with us and, and for me to give them a half drunk bottle of water. And, and, and it just broke my heart and I was like, my goodness, how much do I have that I take for granted? How much do I have that, that I just overlook? And I thought, God, I'm never going to go back and be the same. I'm not going to go back home and ever be the same again. But what happens is we get back on a plane and we come home. And pretty soon we've got bills to pay. And we got work to go to. And we got to fix the car. Or we got to mow the lawn. Or we got to do the things that we got to do. And we get caught up in our routine, in our regular everyday life and we forget we forget because it's not consistently in front of us we have to do something to keep it consistently in front of us here's the other thing it ought to, it ought to stir up a righteous discomfort in us a righteous disco discomfort sometimes you need to lean into what makes you uncomfortable so often we want to remove that which makes us uncomfortable. We want to get rid of the things that, that, that cause pain or suffering. But sometimes it's, it's leaning into those things that really begins to work on us and move us to a new place of action that God's called us to. Suddenly, apathy becomes fiercely righteous passion. You know what? In, in, in the church and in, in the people of God, there needs to be some that, that's stirred up from time to time. What is it that God's placed on the inside of us that stirs us to passion, that moves us to action? What is it? A good example of this is the Apostle Paul in Scripture. Now, if you don't know much about Paul, Paul wasn't always called Paul. He was first called Saul, and he was a persecutor of everything godly. He hated Christians. He sought to destroy them, imprison them, even kill them, and, and watched on with pleasure as, as men of God were killed. He enjoyed that, and he, he went after people that followed Christ, people of the way they were called at that time. 
And as he was traveling to throw more in prison, Jesus himself appeared before him and his life was radically changed. Instead of persecuting the people of God, he began to, he began to seek a, a, a new passion, which was seeing people come to know Christ and, and to live for him. And the Jewish people, his people, he had such a heart for them because he wanted them to know Jesus. But they were so caught up in their, their ways and their traditions that they were missing out on who Jesus was and, and, and why he came for them. And he wanted that for them. And in this scripture, he begins, he begins by, by telling them three different times, listen, hear me. I'm telling you the truth here. Hear me in this. Understand what I'm saying to you. He says this in Romans chapter 9, verse 1. He says, with Christ as my witness. First time right there, he's saying, listen, get this. As Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. Second time, my, my conscience and Holy Spirit confirm it third time right he's saying listen get this I'm trying to get you to understand I'm telling you the truth here my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people my Jewish brothers and sisters and here's what he says about I would be willing to be forever cursed forever cut off from Christ not even to be able to know heaven again I would be willing to be condemned to hell if that would save them. Listen, that's being moved. That's having passion for what you believe in. That's, that's having something down on the inside of you that cares less about you and more about somebody else. He's saying, I, I want that. I want to see that. That's how strong it is on the inside of me. Like Paul, what is it that, 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 that moves us? What is it that, that causes us to care when when we care are we willing to do something and, and here's the deal when we really care there's not anything that we won't do just like Paul was saying there there's not anything that I wouldn't be willing to do I would be willing to to give everything if it would make a difference here's the deal we've got to channel our passion we got to channel our passion because I believe God's placed on the inside of us all of us a passion for something how do we channel that passion. Here's the deal. First of all, we got to focus on something. Focus on something. You got to keep your passion focused on that thing that has captured your heart. Here's what I know. Many things will catch our attention, but only a few things capture our heart. There are a lot of things that we see. Oh man, that's cool. Oh man, I, I, I see that. Oh man, I hurt for that. Oh man, that, 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 that breaks my heart. I'm so sorry I'm praying for you. There's a few things that'll catch our attention like that, but there's, there's, there's just a small amount of things that really captures our heart, that thing that our heart breaks for, that thing that, that we know that God's called us to, that thing that on the inside of us stirs a passion to begin to act, to begin to do. Here, here's a list of just a few. Maybe you have a passion for the unborn, those that, that have not been born yet, that are still in the womb, because Jesus said in Scripture that He knows us when we are still in the womb before we're ever born, and you believe in protecting and, and, and holding on to, to the sanctity of life and, and protecting those things. Or maybe it's racial injustice. Somebody's got to do something. I can be part of that. Or maybe it's human trafficking because that is so wrong. Or maybe it's getting clean drinking water to those that don't have it. Maybe it's cancer research because somebody you know passed away because of cancer and you want to do whatever you can to make a difference in that area. Maybe it's fostering or adopting children. Maybe it's teenage ministry and helping students grow closer to God and making a difference in that area. Maybe it's local outreach and reaching communities and making an impact in, in, in different communities around. Maybe it's missions and your heart just goes out to missionaries and those that are overseas doing the work of ministry and you, you love the thought of that. I don't know what it might be for you, but I believe that, that there's something that's on the heart of each and every one of us. And so often we get caught up in our regular routine and our regular life and all the things that are going on that we miss out on that passion that God's placed in, 
the inside of us to, to truly make a difference. Here's the deal. We could, we could do a little in a lot of different places, but when we focus on something, we can make a big difference on just a couple of things. If I, if I do a whole bunch of things, I can make a little bit of difference. But if I focus on just a few things, I can make a lot bigger difference. Here's the deal. Rather than making a little difference in many places, try making a big difference in just a few. Focusing on those one or two things that you know that God's called you to, that, 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 that's a passion on the inside of you. And here's a thought. You don't always have to start something, but maybe it's joining with those that are already doing something. That's kind of what we do here at church. There are people in, in this community that are doing incredible things, like the Green Valley Assistance Council that we partner with. Sometimes it's, it's not about starting something. It's about joining those who are already making a difference and making a greater impact because of what you bring to the table. Listen, Jesus was focused. Jesus was focused on, on what it was he was supposed to do on his mission. He said over and over, he came that they may have life. Not for the righteous, but for sinners. He came to set the captives free. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He knew his mission. He knew what he was supposed to do. He knew what he came for. He was passionate about it. He was focused on doing that very thing. Here's what I know. Passivity repels, but passion attracts. Passion about what you know that you're called to do when you find that sweet spot and you begin living in it, man, it's, it's an attractive quality to have. I, I, I'll share quickly just my, you know, what, what's on my heart, what my passion is. I, I grew up in church and went to church pretty much all my life as, as a young child, but I, I saw because of that a lot of different things. I saw people who came and, and, and just lived it on Sunday I saw people that, that man, they, they, they were passionate about, they, they loved Jesus, but, but in all those times, it, 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 it was real easy for me to just get caught up in just kind of doing what you're supposed to do until God got a hold of me. And here's the deal, my passion is to see people not just come to know Christ, but begin to live out the purpose that God has for their life each and every day. Why did God call us to start this church? Because we wanna see people who maybe have, have, have been discouraged with church or been hurt by church or, or, or have never really been involved in church come to know that church isn't about just a bunch of rules and regulation and religiosity, but about living for Jesus, living for someone who has called and purposed us to do something great and, and to find their purpose in life. It's a passion. And I, and I wanna see that developed in people where they're not just going to church because that's just a starting place, but they are the church. And they live that out every day of their life, no matter what it is that they're doing. It's a passion. What is it that God's called you to do? What is it that, that, that you're passionate about? Here's the deal, it gives us a voice and it says, it's not impossible, but it's, possible to do what I know that God's called me to do. Listen, apathy finds an excuse, but passion finds a way. We need to focus on that one thing, that something that you know that God's called you to and that you can make a difference in. Here's the next thing is that we need to embrace what hurts. We need to embrace at times what hurts. What did, what did Paul say? We just read it in Romans chapter 9. He said, my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief. He leaned in to that very thing that was, that was causing him such sorrow. He, he, he dove into that and he said, listen, it's causing me great grief, but I want all the more to do what I know that it is that God's called me to do. I want to reach those that need to be reached. The lie that so many people believe that causes and stirs more apathy in this generation is, it's just easier to not care. Just easier to not care. It's, it's better to just not get involved. You ever heard that? Maybe we've even said that. It's just easier that way. Here's what I know. 
it's better to hurt with a purpose than to exist without one. God, help us to want to live with a purpose than to exist without one. God, I don't want to just exist here in this life on earth. Just exist and just be here and not live my life with a purpose filled with passion for the very thing that God's called us to. God, I want to live with purpose. I heard a pastor say this and it it stuck with me and I like this. He said, if our version of Christianity is only about comfort, we are following a false God. Man, is it is it only about our comfort? Do we only do this thing called Christianity because it makes us feel good? Or are we living it for a purpose? If all I ever get is what I want, then I'm missing it. I'm missing it. If I never have to give sacrificially, giving because I I know that God's asked me to give a, a, this amount of money that, that I really don't have, but I know that God's calling me to give it. And so I want to give this because I know it'll make a difference. And, and it, it's a passion on my heart to, to make a difference. And if I never have to give sacrificially, then, then what am I really doing? If I never have to serve inconveniently because I get to come here and people have served and done and set things up so that, so that I can come and sit and enjoy a message. But if I never serve in that same way, what, what am I really doing? If I never have to work at a relationship that, that, that's hard, that's tough, that takes advantage of me, what, what am I really doing? It might be time for us to be blessed with a burden. It doesn't seem like that that would be something we would pray for, but maybe we need to pray that very thing. Say, God, I I want to be blessed with a burden. I want to know that there's something on my heart that causes me to miss a little sleep, that when I spend more than just a few moments praying for something that breaks your heart, it ought to break my heart. When there are people are hurting and I don't fall on my knees and pray and seek you, when I don't step out of my comfort zone, begin to do something that I can do to help make a difference, God, I need to be blessed with a burden from time to time not just cursed with comfort many people in scripture had this very thing Moses had to go before Pharaoh a scary thing and say let my people go David had to come against armies that were trying to kill and destroy his people Nehemiah was blessed with a burden when he said I need to leave the comforts of the of the castle and I need to go build a wall so that my people can return to their homeland. Jesus saw the Jewish people as he's coming into Jerusalem and he saw Jerusalem and he looked and he was burdened for the people of Jerusalem. He said, oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, burdened for you, blessed with a burden that drove him to give his life on a cross for us. Blessed with a burden. Sometimes we need to be pushed out of our comfort zone because here's what I don't want. I don't want to continue to live with the label that we're an apathetic generation. I'm not okay with that. As people of God, we shouldn't be okay with that. We're not an apathetic generation. We're a generation that's moving forward, that's accomplishing things for God, that's taking back territory that the enemy would try to take from us, and we're doing amazing things for the kingdom of God. Amen? That's what he's called us to. It's what he's purposed us for. What is it that moves our heart to begin to step out and do what has he called us to do? Let me end with this prayer that I want to read to you. I didn't write this prayer. I wish I had, but I didn't. It's, it's called the Franciscan prayer, the Franciscan blessing. And uh, I want to read this to you and then we'll, then we'll pray. It says this, and you'll see it on the screen. God bless you. 
with, with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. Oh God, may God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. This is my prayer.